the United States is celebrating its uh, independence and, and you played for USA Hockey and National Team Development Program. What was it like uh, wearing that sweater? There's definitely um, no better feeling to be able to wear the United States crest um, on the front of your jersey. I think that is what every little kid dreams of is to one day when you grow up being able to represent your country, not only as a, you know, a hockey player, but as a person as well. So I think, um, you know, my dad served in the Air Force for over 20 years. So um, particularly for me, um, representing Team USA had a, a different kind of meaning just because I was not at only representing our country um, and everything else that was going on, but also my dad as well. Yeah. Your dad and your father, Steve, flew mm -hmm. in Afghanistan. How old were you? I was, I was little. Um, so I don't really remember much of when he was deployed. He was deployed numerous times. Um, mm -hmm. I was, we were living, I believe, in South Carolina then. Um, but, yeah, I mean, growing up as an Air Force brat, it's, it's definitely something different. I've moved um, eight different times in my life. So really, I've been all over the United States. I was actually born in Oklahoma, which, yeah, um, yeah I mean, I say I'm from Naperville, Illinois, but if I really wanted to, I could say I'm from Oklahoma, which I'm sure would raise some, uh, some eyebrows. And yeah, well, maybe they'll put like a plaque outside the, you know, on the road <laughs> leading into town. What's the incorporate? Is there, a, is there a, a population in what, what town in Oklahoma? Enid, Oklahoma. Enid. Uh, I, I have no clue. I've not been back there since. Probably will never make it back there. But yeah, I was born in Enid, Oklahoma. Yeah, you know, you were, you were mentioning, uh, you know, your father and, and USA and what have you. Uh, you've been invited to the uh, USA Hockey World Junior Championship uh, camp uh, coming up uh, in late July and early August. Uh, they'll have it in Plymouth, Michigan, a rink you're familiar with, playing with mm -hmm. the NTDP. So uh, you, you've been through this before, haven't you? Yeah, so actually I was invited there last summer. Um, I ended up getting cut, which um, that was kind of tough. That was actually the first time I've ever been cut for – uh, any kind of team whatsoever, whatever, like any sport. So um, that was kind of tough. But, you know, I had a lot of good lessons learned from being out there last year. Um, last year was the 2000-2001 birth group, and this year is the 2001 and 2002. So uh, having a lot of fun. It, um, it's going to be a lot of different this year because, um, you know, like Canada, Sweden, Finland, who are normally there, they won't be able to attend. So yeah. it'll almost just be like a mini training camp for like a week and a half. So should be a lot of fun to see a bunch of my old teammates and then um, some guys on the younger team that uh, were there when I was there. In, uh, Plymouth. Sure. Cole Caulfield will be there. Um, so will Alex Turcotte, right? And incoming mm -hmm. freshman Sam Stang will be there as well. So how do you make the squad this time? You know, I think I just have to go out there and play my game. I think last year I thought I had a really good shot at making the team, and I know um, the coaches at Wisconsin thought that way too. So, uh, you know, I just have to go out there and play my 200-foot game, my two-way game, and I think, um, you know, I'm I'm really different from any of those other players that will be at the camp. I think that I bring a lot to the table, um, a mix of skill and both grit. So I think that if I just go out there and, um, you know, give it my all, I think I have a – pretty good shot to, to help the team. Yeah, you really do well what you do. You're good at what you do. Mm -hmm. Thank well. you. So Thank keep you. up the good work. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, so you're trying to make one of the most prestigious uh, hockey tournaments in the world mm -hmm. in the midst of a pandemic. So, uh, so this is about as unusual as it can get for, for, a, for an athlete, really for anybody, but for an athlete too. Yeah, it's, it's definitely been tough um, ever since we left campus back and I don't even know when it was March, March um, 12th. whatever yeah something so like that. yeah yeah this is definitely something that when I'm older I'll be able to tell my kids and they'll have no clue what I'm talking about um you know they'll have no idea the experiences that we've had to deal with and the adversity that we've had to face not only with school but um you know just maintaining your sh uh your body in a good shape to um you know go out there and be able to compete like you normally would um it's definitely been tough but I think it really brings out the best of anyone that um, when they're thrown into a situation like this, uh, you're going to see who, who's willing to put in the extra work, who's willing to get better. Um, and, you know, I've been doing that. So, um, I've, you know, I feel really good um, with how my body feels and I've been skating a lot. So 
Um, you know, I'm not too nervous. I'm not too – don't feel too much pressure going into this camp. I'm just really excited and uh, looking forward to seeing most of my old buddies. Sure. So what's it like being a student athlete during a pandemic at the University of Wisconsin? Usually at this time, you know, you're in the midst of um, mm -hmm. preseason workouts and, and students are all over the place, you know, throwing footballs and Frisbees in front of the Kohl Center. So what's it been like? Yeah, uh, it's been tough for sure. Um, you know, being a freshman, especially that's, um, you know, your freshman year is kind of when you feel everything out through college. Um, and first semester, you know, we have a tough balance between hockey and school. And then the second semester is kind of where you settle into school after the year ends. Um, and, you know, you really focus on um, and kind of decide like what you want to major in um, or whatnot. But uh, it's been tough, everything going online, um, not being able to go to lectures, obviously, that's probably like the biggest because you have to watch them all on your own and then okay. take notes from there. And then another, you know, huge aspect that I think we miss out on is just like the tutoring um, and all the academic support help that we get um, from, from campus and our support staff. And I think that when you don't have those people to talk with and to help you through and just kind of guide you on your way, I think that's tough. But um, I think, you know, I handled it pretty well. I actually just got accepted into the business school. Um, there so you I'm, go. Yeah, so I'm pretty happy about that. I have no clue what I'm going to major in yet, but um, hopefully I'll figure that out within the next <laughs> next couple months or a year. Um, but yeah, so it's definitely been different. Um, it's been tough, a lot of adversity, but um, I think I managed it pretty well. And I think most of the other guys on the team did the same thing. Yeah. Longtime academic advisor, tutor, Mary Weaver Cleves uh, just yeah. announced her retirement. Um, and, you know, whether she was helping with you, uh, helping you with school or you see her in the Cole Center hallways, uh, it was always fun to run into Mary Weaver Cleves. Yeah, for sure. And she's going to be missed greatly. Um, she was awesome. She, ever since like the first day I stepped on campus, she had a plan um, for me to, you know, just graduate, um, telling me how many credits I need to take each semester and whatnot. So it's definitely going to hurt not having her around. Um, but, you know, I'm sure Adam Davies, um, who worked with the women's team, uh, he's been helping us out. So he's been great. Um, but definitely, uh, you, you're not going to be able to replace Mary. Um, mm -hmm. She's awesome. So her presence will be felt greatly um, not being there, but uh, it'll be all right. Yeah, we'll miss you, Mary. But great <laughs> <will>. retirement. <laughs> right? She actually texted me the other yeah. day and how, how much she notices that she just misses being around all the noise and all the guys. And um, that was actually when I first texted her on her retirement day. I was like, you're going to miss it. It's, it's going to be a lot different. Yeah. And then it was funny to see, get a couple, a uh, couple texts from her, just telling her how, telling me how different it was. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned you've been skating, trying to stay in shape. So what do you do to pass the time? Yeah. So I've actually had a really good opportunity here. Um, at first I was just skating with uh, a lot of local Chicago guys, including uh, Matthew D. St. Fowl, who will be a freshman this year, uh, Alex Turcott. Alex Vlasic, who plays for BU, or just a bunch of guys, and we were just scrimmaging for a couple weeks. And then I actually started skating with Kevin Delaney, who's the skills coach uh, for Wisconsin, he works with the Blackhawks in Rockford. Mm -hmm. um, and then a couple girls like Caitlin Schneider, Nicole Lamantia. So uh, sure. it's been fun. There's been a lot of, a lot of us out there, a lot of Badgers. Um, we always kind of get made fun of for that, just wearing our Badger gear and whatnot. But, no, it's been great. So Kevin, skating with Kevin Delaney has been awesome. I've been doing that for a couple of weeks now, and he's really helped me get in shape. Sure. Getting more time with your family too, right? Yeah. I mean, I moved away as a junior in high school, so I definitely haven't had this much time since, I don't know, ever, because um, with my dad being in the Air Force, he was always gone. He lived in Oklahoma Oklahoma for himself for by himself for two years while the rest of us lived in Iowa mm -hmm. uh, when I was uh, sixth and seventh grade. So um, yeah, I think this is for sure the most time uh, I've ever had with my family, but it's been great. Um, we've been going up to my cabin in Hayward, Wisconsin a lot. We've probably spent about three or so weeks up there. We're going up tomorrow. So um, that'll be great. There's no Wi-Fi up at the cabin, so it's really, really old school. I get to take a break from the real world and, you know, everything crazy that's going on. Yeah, so, well, bag a big muskie, right? 
Mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, if you ever need tips, you should talk to Marco Siki. He's a really, really good. Uh, yes. Yes. Yeah. And I know um, my dad and his cousin were hoping to take place in the fishing for kids this year, but unfortunately that would be canceled. So yeah. um, hopefully next year they'll, they'll get into that. We'll have it back next year for sure. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you've seen uh, Oz recently. He's got long hair. Normally he's giving me grief for not cutting my hair. You've got a nice uh, flow going there too, uh, Owen. What do you think? Yeah. What do you think of mine? What do you think of mine? Uh, that's good. I think you should keep it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I talked to to Tony a couple of days ago. Tony Granado, our head. He's coach. got a great flow. <laughs> he he said that his hair is getting close to mine. I said, you know what? Uh, I'd love to see it, but uh, no. He made a joke about. Oh, I'm going to text you a picture of Tony right now, all right, that he sent me. I think he's got a bass in his hand, so I'm going to try to send this to you, all right? He honestly might have sent me that same one. <laughs> he's, got, he's got some I, serious hair going. Yeah, I sent him a picture. Um, I caught a rock bass off off our dock with a fishing net. There you um, go. Yeah, That's was, not easy. You know? it, was, it was a big fish, over like 15 inches probably. Um, a rock bass? With a, wow. Yeah, with a fishing net. So, um, That's pretty good. It was, yeah, it was, it was pretty you get a crazy. You lure in your hands and you're just, you're deadly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully yeah. it works that way. Yeah. NHL playoffs are expected to start here in a few weeks. Who do you got to win the cup? Because there are 24 teams. I don't know how you pick the team that's going to win the, the stage. I think this playoff is definitely something that, um, you know, it's, it's unbelievable because there's so many different like rounds um and nobody's been playing for for so long so i think uh i wouldn't be surprised if you know a team that's not ranked so high um sneaks past everyone and ends up winning it all um you know i don't even know if there is any favorites at this point just because every team's been rested and this will probably be easily be the the best playoffs that have probably ever played um just because everyone's healthy so you know i I honestly have no clue. Um, you know, I always used to be a Blackhawks fan growing up. Um, what do you mean used to be? What do you mean? No, I, I mean, no, I like, I always used to be a diehard Blackhawks fan. And then over the time, over the years, I've just kind of, um, you know, haven't been able to watch as much um, the Blackhawks just because I'm not living in the area anymore, especially when I moved to Michigan. So, um, you know, I if five years ago, I probably would have said the Blackhawks for sure. Um, yeah. Well, you're a Florida no. Panthers draft choice, so I think that must be your favorite team now. <laughs> yeah, no, it'd be it would be great to see see uh, Florida make a run for sure. Yeah, yeah, the NHL um, uh, was to hold their, its draft um, mm -hmm. June what twenty first, no twenty sixth, twenty seventh, right? They're supposed to hold yep. the, the draft. It's been postponed. Don't know when it's going to be. It, um, it, it'll be happening here soon. Uh, mm -hmm. One year ago, you were drafted in the fifth round by the Florida Panthers. Uh, the draft was in Vancouver. That must have been a thrill. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, I had my whole family there. So, uh, you know, that's probably one of the best moments of my life so far, just being in the stands here and name call. That's something you dream about as a little kid. Um, and then it just shows you, you know, that all the hard work has paid off. Um, you know, that was a really cool moment to celebrate with my family, especially, you know, with my mom and dad who sacrificed so much um, to help, you know, uh, grow my hockey career. So, that was awesome. Our team, the U.S. national team, had 17 draft picks off um, last year, and that was, you know, the record for any team. And then we're going to have at least at least a couple more this year. Um, so, you know, that was awesome, just being a part of that team. Um, you know, people have said it's arguably the best best team ever, um, you know, for the, the U.S. national team. So that was awesome. Um, you know, I – that was yeah it was a great experience especially being in Vancouver uh to experience it with my family yeah um you know you mentioned your your family your father Steve your mom Monica who's an I think she's an elementary school nurse is that right yeah yeah so she with, works with, with uh kids with disabilities yes okay I was wondering with no schools and her background was she called into action during the pandemic uh she was not she she thought about it um you know she yeah, well, they're looking for nurses they were looking yeah for um so no, she she ended up just staying home and taking care of us. Um, you know, I have I have three other brothers. So Abram's the youngest. He's he's going to be in third grade. So he she's been helping him a lot out with school um, and whatnot. Because my dad's still been flying. My dad's now a um, pilot for Southwest Airlines. So he's been gone 
um, pretty often. So my mom's had to hunker down and uh, cook a lot of food for us, having two college boys back at home for, I don't, I mean, as I said earlier, long time that, you know, we've all been here together for a long period of time. So yeah. she's a good cook. Yeah. Uh, really good. I definitely, definitely have missed her cooking the past few years. Uh, besides the pandemic, uh, the death mm -hmm. of George Floyd has, has changed things in our country the last several weeks. You know, you're, mm -hmm. what are, you're 19 still, right? Yep. So, correct. so someone, right. So someone who's going to live through this, you know, maybe mm -hmm. this is the turning point point in my lifetime, but somebody who's going to live through this longer than I, I will. What, what do you think of what's been going on the black lives movement, even the, uh, the protests and sometimes riots, you know, in, in your now hometown of Madison? Yeah, well, just to give everyone a little background, uh, my youngest brother, Abram, he's actually adopted from Ethiopia, Africa. Um, so he's African-American. Um, and I think, you know, just growing up with him being in our family, we've, you know, kind of firsthand seen some of the, the issues um, within society today, just because, you know, when he was little, we'd have a little African-American baby with a, um, you know, a full white family. And we'd get looks um, and stares from strangers, which, you know, they're, they're not, um, you know, they don't mean to do it. They don't know they're doing it. But at the same time, when you're on the other end of it, you can see them um, staring at you and just, um, you know, it, it kind of just, you know, hits differently and makes you fully aware um, of some of the struggles that people are going through right now. Sure. You just feel like when you see maybe those looks or some of the things that have been going on, you just want to hug them and keep them safe, right? Yeah. And yeah, for sure. I mean, there definitely needs to be change. Um, and you know, the change starts with um, listening and learning, um, you know, just um, taking in everything that's going around you, um, what people are, you know, the stories you're hearing. And I think, um, you know, change is going to happen overnight, but once you finally start to, you know, realize everything that's going on and taking into account, a um, bunch of different perspectives and whatnot. I think that's slowly gonna, um, you know, make this world a better place for everyone. Yeah, you know, inclusion, um, diversity are two words we we hear a lot right now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my this I've gone 18 years now. This will be my 19th year calling Badger hockey. I can count maybe on one hand, maybe two, I guess, um, how many black players have played at Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. Robbie Earl was one of the most exciting players that I've seen in my time. Uh, Keandre Miller, your, your former mm -hmm. teammate, now with the Rangers. Chris Nelson was part of the 1990 National Championship team. Uh, Shayla Edwards is going to be a sophomore with the women's team this mm -hmm. year. Um, and before yep. that, it was, you know, Sarah Nurse. So that's five. Um, I mean, what, what do we need to do um, for more inclusion, more diversity in, in this wonderful sport of hockey? Yeah, I mean, I've had, you know, the grateful opportunity to play with Keandre and then Marshall Warren um, when I played at the U.S. National Team Development Program. So, you know, I think, you know, hockey needs to be a game for everyone. Um, you know, there's not a specific race that it's, you know, it's meant for. I think, um, you know, you just have to accept everyone and you have to, um, you know, if you have to accept just everyone and you have to bring everyone in and, um, you know, if guys aren't like you, then you just got to bring them into your family, um, you know, treat them like a brother and you got to, um, you know, make sure they're not doing it alone and make sure that you're with them, supporting them all the way. Yeah. You know, Owen, you were talking about, you know, living eight different places, including your mm -hmm. hometown of Eden, Oklahoma, E-N-I-D, yeah. right? E-N-I-D, right? Correct. So, yes. so you, you know, you, you've traveled all over the world. So what's been mm -hmm. the best place you've been in the world besides Enid, Oklahoma? Uh, Sochi, Russia. Sochi, Russia. Um, yes. Uh, we had an international trip, uh, there last year or two years ago when I was on the U18 national team development program. And that place was awesome. Uh, we went there. Um, I don't really remember when, but it was, I want to say like February, March, mm -hmm. um, or maybe before then when it was still, still cold, um, in the United States. And then we go there and it's, um, you know, sunny, uh, warm weather, being around, you know, the Olympic Village, um, which has now turned, you know, into a tourist spot. It's always kind of been a tourist spot, but mm -hmm. uh, that was definitely hands down the, you know, the prettiest place um, I've ever been to. It was awesome there. We stayed in a huge hotel that looked like a, a gigantic castle. Um, and, you know, we, when we were just driving into the, you know, the town, uh, we were just looking around. There's bunch of mountains um you know the seas right there it was uh all of our jaws were just dropped it was 
you know, it would have been nice to have all of our faces on uh, recording on the camera. Yeah, that's cool. Wow. I'm, I've never been outside the United States except for uh, Jamaica for my anniversary <laughs> and my honeymoon. That's about it, really. I've been to Canada, too. That's a pretty good. Country. Yeah. Um, when did you know that you had the ability to play Division One college hockey? And, and I, I know you're aspiring to play in the National Hockey League, too. Mm -hmm. But when did you get an idea that, you know what, I'm, I'm actually pretty good without being arrogant or cocky about it, you know? So I actually had, a, you know, a kind of unique story to my hockey background because no one in my family has played hockey. Um, and I didn't even pick up the game until I was eight. So my first time ever ice skating was when I was eight because, you know, I lived in Oklahoma and South Carolina. Um, sure. Those were the two – you know, two hockey hotbeds, right? Two yeah, hockey hotbeds. A lot of hockey there. Um, <laughs> but so I, I don't know. I'd pretty much been playing every sport. Um, I was mainly football and baseball up until that point when I was eight. And then one of these days, or one of the days, I was just like, Mom and Dad, like, I want to try this. Um, you know, I played a lot of roller hockey um, in Oklahoma because. Uh, we'd see like the Dallas Stars games on and actually the first ever game I watched was the Dallas Stars first uh, Blackhawks game. Okay. So that was pretty cool. Marty Turco was in the net. Nice. Um, and then I couldn't stop saying Jonathan Toes. Um, <laughs> that was, that was, that was really funny. But um, yeah, I, I mean, I actually picked up the game pretty fast within a couple of years. I was playing um, triple A hockey for the St. Louis junior blues. Our coach was Al McGinnis. Um, so, you know, that was, that was awesome to have him as my first coach. And then after that, my dad, as I mentioned earlier, moved to Oklahoma and then the rest of our family moved to Iowa and I'd make a two and a half hour, uh, one way drive to Chicago about five times a week to play for the Chicago mission. Wow. So yeah, I was, you know, sixth and seventh grade, five hours, um, in a car a day. And, um, I think that's when I knew that, um, you know, I had big, big dreams for hockey, um, just playing for the Chicago mission and sacrificing that much and having my family sacrifice, um, you know, so much just for that opportunity. Um, so I think, you know, that's when I started was, um, in eighth grade, uh, you know, I committed to Wisconsin after my freshman year of high school. So, um, you know, I knew Wisconsin is where the place I wanted to be. I, it actually ended up canceling like all my other visits I had scheduled um, once Wisconsin offered me and I had visited there. So um, I think, you know, going back to your question, eighth grade is probably, probably when I knew that I had, um, you know, big goals for, for hockey. Sure. We're glad to have you. Let me tell you. <laughs> Thank um, you. Uh, so what did you think of your first season on the ice with the Badgers? I loved it. Um, you know, I can't tell you how many people I've told you, but, there is not another campus um, in the United States that I'd rather, you know, be on and be there and playing on a daily basis. Uh, Madison's awesome. You know, the atmosphere we have at the Cole Center, um, the facilities, the coaching staff, um, you know, just the support staff. There's, um, you know, it's hands down the best in college hockey for sure. Um, you know, playing at the, uh, the U.S. and CDP, I had a, a great opportunity to you know, go play a lot of, um, mm -hmm. schools. So I've been to like North Dakota, um, Harvard, we went to Boston college last year. We've, I've been everywhere and, um, definitely Madison is, is definitely the best. And, um, you know, I just, I love it. Uh, you know, everything's right there. That's cool. What do you expect from your second season? Cause I'm certainly hoping as you are, that there is a, another season, there will be one, yeah. coming, you know, here in October. Um, uh, what do you expect? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, last year we had so much hype um, going into the year with our team, just um, the talent we would have on our roster. And I, you know, obviously we didn't live up to those expectations. And, um, you know, it weighed, weighed heavily on all of us, um, you know, this offseason, just, just knowing um, the, you know, how many people we let down and all the expectations that we failed to meet. Um, but, you know, we're all super excited this year. Um, we got a great group of guys, um, you know, lots of talent. I think, um, you know, we're going to surprise a lot of people and we're going to be the team that people thought we were going to be last year. Sure. I can't wait for hockey. Just yeah, I, I miss it. <laughs> and uh, hey. it's been a, a couple months without it for sure. Yeah. You know, and just, you know, at this time of the year too, you're watching the playoffs, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, oh, you know, well, 
we'll see it soon. We'll see it soon. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for your time. Great talking to you. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Nice talking yeah. to you. Hope yeah. Good luck well. in school too. Right? Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>